When restaurants shut down during the pandemic, many of the people who worked there lost their jobs, which sadly was probably unavoidable. I mean, think about it. You can't pay a bunch of people if they're not doing any work. I mean, this is a business, it's not Congress. But what was less expected is that now that these places are reopening, many of the workers aren't coming back. This morning, restaurants across the country are struggling to keep up with demand. Business is starting to boom, but hiring is not. Hotels and restaurants say there aren't enough people applying for jobs. Restaurants are getting busier, and we're finding it really harder to find staff. There is definitely a glut of jobs and a lack of hands to fill positions. In January, 7% of restaurant operators named recruitment and retention as their top challenge. By April, that number was 57%. Some restaurants are even turning to robots to flip burgers and make french fries. One restaurant owner put jobs on the menu, literally, advertising for staff below the daily special. A Chicken Express in Texas sported signs on their drive through windows warning customers to be patient with them, given that, quote, no one wants to work anymore. God damn, that's an angry sign. Like, most signs are trying to inform you. That sign is just trying to drag you into some drama. I'm like, hey, man, I don't want to get political. I just want to buy six nuggets to eat in traffic. But that's right. Restaurants like Chicken Express are finding out that their workers want to be there as much as the chickens do. And instead of doing right by their workers, they're now turning to robots to do the job, which I actually think is a brilliant idea. Yeah, think about it. Instead of hiring people in these jobs, just get robots to do it. And then you also get robots to raise the chickens and deliver the food. And then, and then you can get robots to market these companies and create the ads we see on TV, right? Oh, you don't even need people for those ads, right? You, you can use robots for that too. And then, and then like Wall Street can become robots and police can be robots. Teachers, doctors, lawyers, all robots. And then because no human has a job, they can't afford to buy anything. So we just make robot consumers. And then the cycle is complete and humans are no longer necessary. Terminate, 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 terminate. 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 So why is it so hard for restaurants to find workers? Well, to some people who have never worked in one, the answer is obvious. Business groups and Republicans say the enhanced unemployment benefits are encouraging out-of-work Americans to stay home and leading to a labor shortage. The unemployment benefits are too generous. People don't want to go back to work. We've, we've sent them so much money. Texas, Indiana, and Oklahoma are joining 17 other GOP-led states in ending the pandemic relief, the $300 weekly federal boost to unemployment benefits. Republican governors claim that these benefits are keeping Americans from going back to work. Human nature kicks in. Uh, do I want to get the same amount of money by going to work every day and working hard? Do I want to get that amount of money by sitting at home? Why work if you can get that kind of money and stay home and Netflix? All these kids are watching Netflix and then having sex. Get a job. And look, man, I get where these pundits are coming from. If the average person could have their jobs, whew, they'd be crazy not to take them. I mean, who wouldn't want to spend 10 minutes a day sitting in a chair complaining about how other people don't wanna work? I mean, that's a great gig. And you know what? These Republicans might be right about one thing. Generous unemployment benefits really might be one reason people aren't rushing back to their old jobs. But that doesn't mean they're just sitting around Netflixing. First of all, it's been over a year. They've already finished Netflix. And I mean, sure, they could subscribe to Paramount Plus, which has an extensive library of classic films and hit shows. I think they're gonna subscribe. But the point is, those unemployment checks are not subsidizing laziness. They're giving workers the rare opportunity to look for a job that's more than just a way to survive to their next paycheck. The pandemic gave restaurant workers a chance to reinvent themselves, choosing to leave for what they believe are better situations. Following pandemic shutdowns, when workers have been forced into overdrive, coronavirus exposing industry flaws. Works restaurant workers are considered essential workers, but we're not treated like essential workers. There's definitely issues with wages. I think there's issues with childcare. I think there's issues with um, benefits, health insurance. Where you're having to work like 50 plus hours a week, and it's just, it's still not enough to pay your bills. 
and to be able to take care of your family. Many restaurant workers left the industry over the past year, taking jobs in sectors such as the construction business with higher pay and better hours. People move to things like warehouse jobs, which offer more regular schedules, more pay and health care. Medical marijuana, it's an industry that's growing and it's attracting workers from a particular sector of the economy. I've seen a lot of uh, cooks, cocktail servers, a lot of people from the restaurant industry coming here and I just, I think it's a quality of life issue. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't rather work in the weed industry? It's the most chill job in the world. Customers are always relaxed. Nobody's in a hurry. The only bad thing about the job is the drug test. You know, that's where they give you a bag of edibles and you gotta eat it all right there. I failed that like three times. But people, it makes complete sense that restaurant workers are looking for better jobs, right? Because these are tough jobs. They're on their feet all day. They take care of everyone. They pretend not to hear when you guys are breaking up at the table. And after all of that, they have to rely on tips. I mean, you know a job isn't paying enough when every meal ends with a mini GoFundMe. And aside from giving workers the opportunity to look for jobs that they can actually live on, these unemployment benefits are also giving them leverage to use against their former employers. And it seems like it might actually be working. Restaurant and fast food chains are all ramping up hiring and beefing up employee benefits to attract workers. Starbucks, Olive Garden, announcing new benefits or increased pay in just the last few months. McDonald's increasing its minimum wage. Company-owned restaurants will now pay workers between 11 and $17 an hour, depending on location. McDonald's hoping to attract 10,000 new employees. Whataburger is adding 50,000 workers, adding emergency pay and increasing a 401k matching. Taco Bell is giving its store managers paid family leave. Chipotle is increasing its wages to an average of $15 per hour. Other Chipotle benefits include mental health care, 401k, and debt-free college. Restaurants trying to bring workers back, sometimes offering cash incentives. Applebee's taking a rather different approach. You fill out an application to Applebee's and you get a free appetizer. Damn. Applebee's is confident in their onion rings. Yeah, they're out there like, forget the 401k, guys. Just have them eat these bad boys. Yeah, get ready to meet your new co-workers, everybody. <laughs> equal rights, more like equal spice. But the point is, many restaurants are getting workers back by raising wages and offering benefits. So I guess it turns out that when they were saying nobody wants to work, what they actually meant was nobody wants to work for the starvation wages that we were willing to pay them. And apparently, they were able to afford this the whole time. It just took some pressure from the workers to force their hand. And look, I know that some restaurants can only afford to pay their workers so much, but I honestly believe that that's your responsibility as a business owner to figure it out. Like if you need more revenue, I don't know, try adding a side of guac to the menu. It's one thing I've learned in America is you can charge whatever you want and customers will pay for it if it's guac. Doesn't even matter if it makes sense for your restaurant. Just add guac. Seafood place, add a side of guac. Indian place, add a side of guac. Guac place, well, I mean, you're already boiling. You don't need advice from me, player. <laughs> the point is, if your business can only get by on the backs of workers who can't, then that's not a sustainable business because everyone deserves a job that lets them afford the necessities of life, housing, healthcare, and at least one Netflix.